Hello, it's Kylie Patucci, Stampin' Up! Demonstrator in Australia here with you. And I wanted to show you how you can make your own vellum paper. Because, you know, we love the new vellum paper, but all of us freak out about using it. And it's just so beautiful. I don't know what to do with it. So I just wanted to show you how you can make your own. So that then you don't have to be afraid of loving chopping your vellum paper, the wonderful romance vellum paper. So what I have done, let me show you the card that I've made for our Greek Isles Achievers blog hop today. So this blog hop is a group of demonstrators from around the world who have achieved the Greek Isles trip from Stampin' Up! Which is really exciting. So we will all be going to Greece this year in July, which we are so excited about. I mean, who doesn't want a free holiday? Oh, I'll have one, thank you. <laughs> so big thank you to Stampin' Up! because it's a really awesome reward. And if you wanna know how to get these trips and be part of awesome, awesome things, you can just ask me about joining our Stampin' Up! team, the Crazy Crafters. Please just send me any questions you have if you live in Australia. I have to live in Australia, sadly. I'd love to open it up to the world. <laughs> so this is the card that I've made and I'm going to show you exactly how to do this. Oh, I've got different lighting, so I'm going to have to get used to using this different lighting. We've got the most amazing tinting done in our house, like amazing. I absolutely love it instead of blinds. And so for the first time in my life, I've been able to open our the, the door all the um, blinds in my craft room which is super exciting but I didn't test my white card so I might have to just do a little bit of this there we go that's a bit better <laughs> I'm gonna have to play with the lighting a little bit but this is the most amazing vellum I've done white embossing on top and there's a little bit more of white embossing on the side here that I haven't colored and I want to show you how you can use your blends to color in your vellum which is very exciting and Stampin' Up! have the most beautiful cardstock vellum if you haven't played with this vellum yet please 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 make sure you get some because it is just incredible incredible stuff like if you work with this you are just gonna love it and hopefully after this card today you definitely will get it so that you can recreate this card that I'm doing with you today so let's jump in I've changed the colors a bit because you know it's a bit of fun to mix it up and I will show you exactly what I have done so let's jump in hello there I'm still here so this is the card just in case the lighting was a little bit funny I'll have to fix that up before I go live next time <laughs> so actually it's not live today it's recording so welcome to my YouTube recording. For anyone who's not following me, please follow and then click on the bell so that you get my notifications. Apparently you have to subscribe and click a bell now. They're not making it more difficult. Of course they are. <laughs> so this is the card. I wanna show you exactly how easy it is to do this amazing vellum technique with our blends. And as you can see here, I've got a little bit of embossing that I've just left. Um, without coloring but you could decide to color the entire thing I love the look of having just the two colored and I will show you exactly how I did that so I'll bring in all of my beautiful colors that I'm using today so I've got the vellum already pre-cut the whisper white layer pre-cut and I've decided to go with gorgeous grape for this one and then granny apple green for the green now I'll give you the measurements in both metric and imperial. I know I'm that good. It, t it really hurt my head, so I hope you appreciate it <laughs> for all you imperial peeps out there. So we'll start with metric first. So we've got our regular card base. So you cut the A4 in half, and it's at 14.9 that you'll be cutting it in half. That's a little insert. So inside you want to have a little insert. That's going to be that one. 14.4 by 10 and then our layers on the front we've got the whisper white layer which is this one here 9.8 by 14.2 and then the the vellum layer so they're they're your measurements that you need for metric in imperial it's going to be your usual card base which is cutting your letter in half which is 8.5 by 5.5 and that's your insert 
inside the car. We don't want naked cards. No naked, no nudie runs <laughs> with our cards. So that's four inch by 5.25. And then the front we're going to do, which one's bigger? Yes, see I can't tell with the imperial measurements. Five and one eighth inch by three and seven eighth inch is going to be a whisper white. And then your vellum is the five inches by three and three quarter inches. So there are your measurements. Make sure you jot all of them down. I will put them on the description below here in YouTube as well, so that you don't miss it. Now, all we're going to do first up is do our embossing. So I'm gonna get this beautiful stamp set here called Wonderful Romance. You may purchase this in my online store if you live in Australia. Uh, it is an amazing bundle because you can get the most gorgeous framelits that go with it. But interestingly, this one here, the Together is a Wonderful Place to Be, it doesn't quite fit in the framelit that comes in this bundle. So that's where I thought our rectangle stitched framelit dies, which is these ones here, in case you need the item code there, is absolutely perfect for this um, card, as you can see here. Look how gorgeous that looks. Perfect! So let's start stamping. I know, I'm jumping right in. Let's do this. Now I've been a bit naughty and I haven't attached my cling to this. So let me just quickly show you how I can do this because a few people are not coping with the cling. It is very, very clingy. So you have to be careful when you're prizing it off your block. But what I find is good is I take one side off and I line it up on the other side that isn't removed because once you stick this down, whoo, you ain't moving it. So I'm just having a look here. It works really well for the bigger stamps, but if it's a smaller stamp, it's not as good doing it this way. You might have to peel it off. Yep, that looks good. And then press. So that goes down like that. The sticky side will of course peel off. And then you have this other side that hasn't been glued down. Be careful not to stick it against each other. I mean, it doesn't stay there, but it's just easier if you don't. And then that's it. Your cling is on. Now this stuff is super, super clingy. So before, when you put your stickers on, it didn't work. Now it is the opposite <laughs> and it works so well. Oops, sorry to bump you. It works so well that you actually have to be careful when you're taking it off. So just, yeah, sort of slowly pry it off a bit and then it will slowly come off. But yeah, you can rip your rubber. It is that strong, but it's awesome because you know it's gonna stay there. It's not going anywhere, it's really happy. So we need to get our Versamark. But I really like, I really, really like having the labels back on. Because look how awesome that is. I know exactly where it is if my block was clean. You know exactly where it is and you know exactly where you're stamping and what section is being stamped, which is always a nice thing. Any Anything that helps you feel more confident when you're stamping is always good. So we're going to go, in this one I did it from this side, but I'll do it the opposite. Just, yeah, just to mix it up a bit, just to do something different. So I'll stamp about there. So I did the two corners first, the two bigger corners. So there's one. You may not be able to see that because of the, oh yeah, there a little bit. You can see it with the reflection. And then I'll do the other corner. And I have a new embossing container. I don't know if it's going to work yet, but I'm willing to give it a try. And of course, you know, I didn't practice it before I did my filming because the, where's the fun in that? <laughs> where's the fun in winging it? Just, you know, going it, doing it as you go. Oh, that looks so pretty. Then I just need the other two sections. So I'm not gonna use all of this, of course, but I just wanna stamp it all so that I have options. So I wanna do this corner. And I didn't do my embossing buddy. I think that with vellum, it's actually not as static like not as much static as normal paper, but we will soon find out if our embossing powder gets a bit funny. I'll know it's because I'm to blame. So I'm doing the opposite side, this side on that up there, I did the flower. On this side, I'm doing more of the sort of, yeah, different flowers and leaves. So now let's do the test. This is my 
new embossing container which is one of our sweet treat cups. Isn't that cool? So I haven't dressed it up yet because, you know, I've been a bit busy. <laughs> I've been doing a few things. But I've put some white embossing in there. I think I've got another container of white embossing. So I'm going to put a number of them in there because they do get a little bit dirty. Do I have another one here just floating around? Oh, I think I might have found one. Dun, 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 dun. Yay! Should I put it in as well? Or wait, because this is this is pretty dirty. Then I'm gonna contaminate this one. Hmm. I think I'll I think I'll leave it. I won't contaminate. I'll keep it nice and fresh. I'll put that in a different container. It can have its own container. New embossing powder, old embossing powder. So what I was thinking of doing was tipping it into here. Let's see how this works. And then using this to tip back into the container. Is that gonna work? Oh, Maybe not. Maybe with something this big, paper is the go. Let's get some paper. You stay there. <laughs> Do not move. You can even use, um, I've got some grid paper here. <laughs> you can use some of your grid paper. And this is an old one that I've got with stuff all over it, but that's okay. You know, we don't want to waste these things. And this will mean that all of our embossing powder can go wherever it likes really if it goes back in the container excellent if it doesn't all good too we can just put it anywhere we like so the only thing you have to be careful when you're doing like embossing all over is trying not to put your thumb in the versamark or into the part that you've embossed because that's a bit of a drama we'll just go straight onto here but I really do like this container. I think it's really cool for my powder. And it means that I've got more flexibility. I can put more in there. I can put a few of them in there. Okay, that's all looking very, very nice. I'm very happy with that. And because this opening is a little bit larger, I'll tip that in there. It makes it a little bit easier. You stay there, my little friend, my vellum friend. Look at that, we'll pick that piece out. It's a piece of black cardstock. You go, at least I can get one little bit of messiness out of there. Sorry about the reflection, it's my light. There we go, now it's back in its little container. And what I can do is even pick some of this up later. Because I've, I've definitely, I'll do this now. I've definitely uh, did a test there. No small things, yes, the little container works. A big thing like what I was doing? No, no. Just use paper. But it's the best way to find out, isn't it? Just to try it and go, yes, that works. No, that doesn't. That's how all of us do it. Okay. But I love this. I think it's super cute. So that's that. Now we need to heat this. And I'll do it over this side. I want, I've still got a little bit of, um, I'll get my brush. I'll brush it off because I've still got embossing powder on there and I do not want that to heat. <laughs> I do not want that to stick to my vellum. There we go. Brush it all down. I was never here. Chaos Kylie was never here. Now, let's blow those little black bits out of there. That's okay. I must have been cutting some black cardstock and it's got into my embossing powder. <laughs> so I'm just using my heat gun, the Stampin' Up! heat gun. And of course you can put it on low setting so that you don't get any buckling. But I'm so impatient. Let me put it on low setting. I always just blitz it and then kill the life out of it. It ends up like buckling and all sorts of things. But you know, it works on the low setting too. Just takes a little bit longer. You just need a little bit more patience. Now, the interesting thing with this card is I thought I would be able to color in directly on the front layer. And of course you still can if you want to. But what I noticed is the blends are so incredible. They actually color in the embossing, like the white embossing you can color. So it's a handy little trick if you're wanting to white emboss on black. And then you can actually use the emboss, white embossing 
to color in with your blend. So that's another little technique. And I'll probably do a, a card on that very soon, I'm sure, <laughs> to show you how to use your blends with white emboss. But it just meant that I, because I didn't want to color my white emboss, I wanted you to still be able to see the embossing. So I colored my vellum from behind, which is really cool. And it just means you have a lot more flexibility. Um, yeah, you can color in a lot better. So I was a bit scared doing it over the top of the Whisper White. So this is working okay. Just need a little bit more patience, which I'm not very good with. Kylie and patience do not really go together. Oh, I'll go up a little bit more so you can see this properly. Who moved my paper? Who's been here? <laughs> now we're all all happy. It's all even. But I'm liking this um, having the light. I'm feeling very open and exposed and yes, it's good. You can see me properly. Yeah, we did the whole entire house. So now we're not having to pull down the blinds. It's actually 35 degrees here in Melbourne today. Hey Google, what is 35 degrees in Fahrenheit? Hey Google, 70% volume please. We didn't hear you. How much is 35 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? Google, how much is 35 degrees in Fahrenheit? 35 degrees Celsius equal 95 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go, it's 95 degrees Fahrenheit in Australia today for all of those that use Fahrenheit. So if you see a little bit of, you know, a few sweat marks, you'll know why. And Bruno even bought Jesse and I this really cool fan that you can spray at the same time. So I can just press a button just fan myself and then if I want a little bit of refreshment ah, just spray myself thanks Bruno it's really great and then you fan yourself once you're sprayed and it's all cool okay thanks Bruno love my fan <laughs> back, back to card making <laughs> cooled myself down now so let's do Highland Heather because we don't have gorgeous great uh, markers yet that's a definite that we would like on the list, Stampin' Up. Thank you very much. But the Highland Heather looks really great. I'll use the dark. There we go. And you just want to pick up all the flowers. So I'll do just the corner like I did with my card here. I'll leave, leave one side, the smaller side um, not coloured in. Because I really like the contrast of the two, like seeing the vellum coloured and one side not coloured. So there's not many flowers in this, which is because a lot of it is leaves. So I ended up doing these uh, smaller ones here. I thought I'll do them as little flowers because otherwise there's quite a lot of green happening. So just dot them. And it's going to feel quite strange because you're sort of like, oh, am I doing it right? Am I in the lines? But it's actually really good when you turn it over and you see the effect. We'll wait until we do both sides, or both colours I should say. And then you can see the, the difference. I hope all of you are using your blends. And if you live in Australia and you want to start collecting these beautiful blends, these alcohol markers, then let me know because I'll put up the link actually below. So have a look. On my YouTube we have a club that you can join and the clubs are great because it means that you can collect the whole set and um, do it in, a, in an affordable way oh there's another one there so we'll color that over the top so you don't have to stress about the lines you're just coloring wherever you see a leaf I'll come this way so I can see where things are that's definitely a leaf, and that too. It's 
see this is the magic art of blending it puts you into this like amazing calm place of happiness it's like ah, the world has stopped there is no stress I'm pretty sure it was proven scientifically that colouring in was good. Good for the health, mental health, emotional health. Oh, there's a little flower down there. We'll do a little flower. Okay, let's have a look at that. So it looks a bit manky there. I'm like, mm, not impressed, but ready? Ta -da! And there was a little bit of a embossing mishap there, but it's still going to look amazing. Put it against here. Amazing. Put it against here. And oh my goodness, look how beautiful that's looking already. So let's do the other side. Just make sure I've got the right. Yeah, that's the right one. This is for inside. Yeah, that's better. Because I wanted more of the gorgeous grape to be seen and once you put the sentiment it even pops more so if you wanted to I'm pretty sure that you can layer and come in again to make that darker let's have a look and see if it makes a difference yep I reckon it does I tried blackberry bliss I did a little test strip around here somewhere and I tested it before I went, um, before I filmed. And I keep going to say before I went live, but this isn't live. <laughs> I'm just so used to going live all the time. But it, yeah, I had a strip somewhere. Who knows where it went? It went with everything else that I lose in this room. And yeah, the Blackberry Bliss just didn't look quite right. So it's good just to get a little test piece of, piece of vellum and just see what it's going to look like um yeah and then you can pick your colors because i was like oh i don't have any gorgeous grape that would have been perfect and so i was just going to go with blackberry bliss and then when i tested i was like mm, i don't think that's the right shade of purple so i was very happy i tested it first Okay, that's all our flowers. Now we'll do these little ones. And you can totally do these a different colour. You could do a beautiful Daffodil Delight or Crushed Curry or something like that if you wanted to. Even Flirty Flamingo would look gorgeous. For an extra bit of pop of colour. calming and there we have it so then we just do our granny apple green and dark and just you can check which side is the brush and which side's not I like to have it the way that I'm looking so I know exactly where I'm coloring because there's a few little tricky bits in here you're like mm, is that a leaf is it not a leaf Good. especially this little section here because you've got the stem but then you've got a leaf behind it so it's a little bit tricky that one yep in there so pretty and next we're going to do the gorgeous sentiment emboss that in white on the gorgeous grey so I find with the with the vellum that there's no real purpose of using blends the way we use it on paper like using the light and shade 
because it's sort of so light doing it behind that um, you don't sort of want to take away from that color you want to try and use the darkest color that you can so that's going to go on there happy days and then we're going to stick that down on there look how good that looks oh my goodness I absolutely love it so the other thing that I want to do for the inside and our envelope is just use our gorgeous grape did I end up grabbing that ink pad I thought I did in my mind I did <laughs> in my head it's here <laughs> the best place to look is up in the cupboard no it's definitely not in the cupboard so I did, I did grab it but who knows where I put it you know this this is this is the story of Kylie right it's like put it down somewhere there it is I found it you can stop looking everyone I found it yay thank you gorgeous great thanks for showing up to the party and I oh, just want to give that a little bit of white. I've got some Versamark on there. Just use my chamois, my purple chamois. He looks grubby, but he's such a good cleaner. Look at that. Perfect. And it doesn't even feel sticky anymore. Awesomeness. So I'm just going to use this gorgeous grey to do some stamping here in the corner. There we go. Oh, so beautiful. Look at that. Do you not want this bundle? Like, you must have it. It's not like, it's not like, should I get it? It's like, I have to get it. Wonderful romance. Oh, so beautiful. Super, super, super pretty. Mm, yeah, I'll do that side. Oh my goodness, look what I did. Little Kylie Batucci did it again. Kylie has been here. How did I manage that? Been for you. <laughs> Wipe the hands, Kylie. Get another envelope. Good thing I have another envelope here. That one's a bit squashed. Don't know what happened to him. There we go. That's better. What happened there? I must have stuck my finger in the ink pad. Okay, where were we? Let's start again. Yes. No touching anything, Kylie Batucci. <laughs> what a disaster. <laughs> ah, you know, the best thing. We've always got another one here. <laughs> I'm sure it's happened to all of you. The worst is when it happens to your project. It's like, are you kidding me? Now I have to find an embellishment to stick on top of it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to have to do that. <laughs> and then we get our chamois, get that a wipe. And just to make sure everything's off, you can just stamp. Yep, everything's happy. So that's our envelope and our beautiful insert done. You can color that if you want. That's totally up to you. But let's do our sentiment because I always end up moving on after I've used the stamp and I'm like I should have just stamped everything then so the sentiment we're going to use is the same one which is the together is a wonderful place to be it totally is so and it's such a nice um sentiment like you think oh it's probably only something you would use to say your husband or boyfriend or something like that but when you think about our friendships around the world that we have with Stampin' Up like together is the best place to be it's like on stage what a perfect sentiment for on stage gifts or swaps it's like you know what it's so much better when we're together than apart so it's perfect for lots of different things don't think it has to be like something romantic it can be for our friends as well. It's like, you know what? I like being with you. It's better when we're together. <laughs> so that's good there. Now, I'll show you a good reason why. See, look at this. I'm like, which way is the right way? And I always stamp them upside down. I know what to do this time, so hopefully I won't stamp it upside down. But usually, it's upside down. So that's why it's good to put your little cling things on now let's try it 
with this container with a small thing. Maybe it'll work this time. <laughs> I'll have to tip it from this direction. Oh yeah, that looks good. Plenty. And so the rest can just go in there. Give it a little flick just to get everything off. So there you go. It works perfectly if you've got a small space. Maybe if it's a bigger space, you could put a little spoon in there or something and spoon it in slowly. We'll heat that. I'm doing high speed this time. I'm like, go, you go. Yay. I love embossing. It's so much fun. Look how beautiful that looks. There's nothing like white embossing on colour. It's just so pretty. And the sentiment just pops and it's like, hello, I'm here. I have arrived. Sentiment is in the house. Okay, bring over our big shot. This is a good workout for our arm muscles. In fact, you could probably do like a big shot workout class, couldn't you? Just don't drop it. You can't be like, okay, finish your rep. Boom. Drop it on the ground. Broken your big shot. I'm totally sure if I just... You know, every now and then in my craft room, if I just lift it a few times, I could get some really good arm muscles. I don't think it'd be a good idea to try and do tricep dips with it or anything, though. <laughs> you end up ripping a muscle. <laughs> so I'm going to get my rectangle stitch shaped framelits. I always forget which way. It goes rectangle stitched framelits. There we go. And I found the perfect size, which is this little one in between. So you know where it is. It's that one there up the top. And I'm going to lay that down. And because I've got my amazing magnetic plate, it's going to help me put that exactly where I want and stay there. If you have a little trouble with it moving around and it's not staying in place, make sure that you have a really flat one. So change these around all the time. Flip them so that they're as flat as they possibly can be and uh, also just move it up a little bit or down a bit because sometimes there's certain pockets of the magnet that's like a negative and positive ions so it has a little bit of a conniption and decides to reject your pl your placement sorry about the bumping as long as you don't fall then it's all okay right i will that will be my next setup is putting my stand in a different place so that you don't bump when you see me. Or I could just turn my face off when I'm big shotting. That's an idea, isn't it? Turning myself off so that you don't get the wobbles. So this is our beautiful sentiment. Look how perfect that is. So we'll move our big shot over. I'll just do a few lifts while I'm here. Ooh. Ooh. See, I just ripped some muscle. Got myself strong. Yes. Who said you can't work out and craft at the same time? Totally. So I had an idea of maybe doing this. I had two of them because they're so beautiful. But let's just let's just look at it. I just did a few ideas, but we can gauge it when we look at it. We're all still live. Yes, we're all happy. So what I decided to do for gluing was go with Tombow, my favourite glue of choice. But what I did was just, just a few little dots here. Whoops, that is a really big dot. <laughs> that is not the little dot that I wanted. So I'm gonna just lift that up a little bit. And in fact, the best possible thing I could do right now is pick it up with my finger because it's the only thing that's going to remove that. And we don't want that much on there. So you could even smooth it out with your finger. Something like human, the human touch that's very good. Much better than trying to pick it up with the glue holder. Now over here, of course, we don't have colored, but you can just pop it on the bits of um, embossing. Just do a few little dots around the place because you still want it to stick on these edges here. And I found that by doing just small amounts rather than a big amount, that it was actually hunky-dory on my other project, it was anyway. We shall soon see how it dries. 
because I want this to stick down well. There we go. And I think I'll do it, yep, that direction there. So I've just done it so it has a little bit of overlap of the Whisper White, which I really love that look. And if you wanted to, you could raise that, but I didn't, I stuck it down, but you're totally welcome to put that on dimensionals. So we'll stick that. Ta -da. Now, this is where we do a little bit of testing and see what looks better. So we can do it like this. We can do it like this and raise it like that. So, oh, I actually really like that. So that's an idea. Ooh, that's a real popper. I like that one. To me, that's, that's saying yes at the moment. Then there's this. Oh, now you're just making it too difficult for me. <laughs> So when I get to this point, I go, just pick one. Don't think about it too much, Kylie. Just do it. <laughs> and even if you did that in a whisper look white, it would look amazing too. So you'll have to tell me which one's your favourite. Did you like it on the Highland Heather or the Granny Apple Green? Which one do you like? I must say, I am loving it on the Granny Apple Green. That's my fave. So I'm going to do it like that. And it's just good to test it. And even if you wanted to, you could test it like this and say, well, maybe I'll just like it on its own. Maybe it doesn't need a little backing. I mean, it's beautiful just as it is. But you know what? I thought I'll bring in a little bit of color and just show you how you can make the same card, but just you know, a bit of extra variety, something a little bit different. So let's glue that down and then we'll dimensional the sentiment. So there's that, and oh, there's my lovely dimensionals. Thought I'd lost them too, but no, they are here. They're behaving themselves. So I'll put a couple of those on. I love dimensionals. I am a dimensional addict, and I'm proud of it. Who else is a dimensional addict? I'd love to hear your dimensional addict stories. <laughs> There we go, look at that. That looks so beautiful, oh my goodness. <laughs> Did I really make this card, like really? And that's another tip that I have for you too, is if you're gonna make one card, like why not, you've gone to all that effort to make this card, why not do the same card, but just mix it up a little bit and do different colors or different, layers or like I've just changed the direction of the flowers I've changed the color I've done it, done it a little bit different on the sentiment you could even completely leave out the sentiment and then just have it ready to go already all done and then you can stick on whatever sentiment you want at the time that something comes up so it's one of those really cool versatile things that you can do but I think doing a number of them because you've finally got all the measurements right you've worked out what looks good You've done all that work, so why not milk it? Make make the most of the situation and do a few of them so that you have them ready to go. And you know, so we don't get bored, we can just change it up a little bit. Like this one here, I thought, no, I'm gonna do it the same color as the background. On here, I did it with embossing the insert. So it's up to you what you do. But that, is our card can you believe it we have been crafting together for i don't know how long 39 minutes so thank you for joining me today i'm just going to flip to full screen so you can see this card properly hopefully the color is okay let's just try this and see if it picks it up okay oh it's not too bad it's a little bright but we will get over that <laughs> at least you've got no shadows now <laughs> So thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you liked our card today. Screenshot. <laughs> and if you have any comments, um, please let me know. Be kind. I can't get over how many thumbs down I get. It actually makes me laugh. And I, I imagine it's some kid looking for um, gaming videos and then stumbling upon my craft videos and going, who is this old lady making craft? <laughs> That's what I imagine is happening. Because <laughs> if 
if I imagine it's actually an adult or a woman that's a crafter and doesn't like my design, it's too hurtful. <laughs> so it's a kid who didn't find his gaming video. <laughs> so thank you all very much for being here. Please thumbs up, subscribe, click on the bell if you like my projects as I have many, many more coming that will help you to use this occasions catalog to the most. And if you live in Australia, please, please, please contact me. I would love to look after you. You can join my team. You can shop with me, whatever suits you. Have a wonderful crafty day. Bye everyone. Mwah.